posted a question up for our pet vet or sent in a photo of yourself with your pet. Nice. Now, speaking of our pet vet, I think it's time to meet the man himself, Dr. Alex Melrose. Welcome to the show, hey, bro. How are you guys? Nice you. <laughs> High five. Hello. Well, Thanks for me. Now, first of all, it's time to get into the hard-hitting questions. How long have you been a vet for? 15 years. Wow. Yeah, that's a while, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm showing my age. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is Appreciate it something it. that you've always wanted to do, being a vet? Yeah, it is. Um, apparently, from whenever I could first sort of talk, um, I, you know, I'd walk along the street and see little animals injured or hit by cars and things and say I was going to grow up and, and rescue them. So, oh, do you yeah. think nice. you need a natural knack with animals to be a vet? Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I think you've got to be calm. Uh, you've got to be able to be in control yeah. and sort of give off that kind of energy, yeah. you know, so that they can relax and trust you. It's like the animal whisperer. Totally, man. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> when you're in surgery, But man. without the whispering, <laughs> yeah. You're going to be okay. Now, uh, with the, when you're yeah. in surgery, what's some of, like, the most common problems that you see with pets around Auckland and New Zealand? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, you get a lot of road traffic accidents, so you get broken legs and uh. broken tails and things like that from... Um, animals zigging when they should have zagged, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, abscesses on cats from fighting. Yeah. Because there's a lot of cats within a small, you know, small space, so they're yeah, totally. kind of going for each other's territory. I know, I know my little dog Sumo, when he, as soon as he can, if there's any opportunity to get out our yard and go for a little roam around the streets, he does, and I'm running down the street yeah, going, yeah. come back, come back, come back! Come back, baby! Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, what's the most unusual pet you've ever encountered? Uh, iguana. Oh, yeah, when I was working in England, I had to look after iguanas. What's wrong with them? What do you have to they, do? they come in there about, you know, this big, yeah. they're standing like this, massive tail. Pretty, <laughs> they're pretty intimidating looking yeah. things. Yeah, I used to like go spiky. It, like, you know, like yeah. don't hurt yeah. Me. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have pets yourself? <laughs> yeah, I've got cats, yeah, I've got um, Burmese and I've got uh, also a domestic short hair that lives at the, at the clinic. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, now, just what's, cruises around. what's the weirdest pet name you've ever encountered? Satan. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Who would call that? Yeah. Who would call that? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's horrible. Yeah, and interestingly enough, the cat was really, really vicious. Oh, so I think, oh I think, no. But I, th I think they named it before that, so I don't know if it sort of was bad luck. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, enough of our questions. If you have a question for Dr. Alex Malrose, Dana, what's the deal? What you need to do is come along to the-hub.tv, click on Hub Talk Studio 2, and there are a whole bunch of questions already, so make sure you put them up there. It's time for a break. When we come back, we'll be putting the questions to the doc. We'll see you soon. Hello, and welcome back to Studio 2. As you can see, the doctor is now in the hub. Is it cool having you, like, doctor in front of your name? It's pretty cool, yeah. I guess, you know, sometimes you don't try and use it all the time because you're not trying to show off. It sounds cool. But I reckon show off. Use it all the time. Nah, nah. Now, how are you finding the hub? It's pretty cool. I like these apples. Yeah. They're good. Lots of questions. And well, I'll just let you get on to those because right now it's time to check out the... Website of the Week. Yes, here is the website of the week because we're talking about pets. This one is to do with cats. Now it is iCanHasCheeseburger.com. That's weird, eh? iCanHasCheeseburger.com. It's on the screen so you can go and check it out. Now the cool thing is, is different people that have got cats as pets put these pictures up. And uh, they're sort of in different kind of weird poses. And then different people kind of write up uh, what their cats might be saying or funny little lines. So let's have a look. Here's another one. We saves you a seat. Ah, uh, it's one of those websites. Ah, uh, whole bunch of different pictures. Let's have a look. What else? That one's pretty cool. Just chilling out, hanging out. So make sure you check it out. It is iCanHasCheeseburger.com. Go have a look. See. Now also this week it is Conservation Week, and it's all about getting involved and doing oh, your you bit. And here's man doing your bit. Now that whole bunch of questions have come through. So cool. can we uh, get into a few of those? Yeah, far away. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Questions for the doc. Hi, my dog's a miniature fox terrier and she barks at my guinea pigs whenever they're in their pen. I know that's her instinct, but how can I get her to stop? Yeah, it's I mean, tricky. Yeah, it is a, it's a hard one, those behavioural questions. Um, I guess you've really got to retrain her and, and often the best way to start is to get really, really good basic commands. Okay, so if in any situation she would sit and lie, She's probably unlikely to go off and hassle the guinea pigs simply because you've given her something else that she has to do no mm -hmm. matter how distracted she is. So we do things like that which is called substitution. So you're substituting a good behaviour with lots of praise and treats for what's potentially a bad behaviour. Ah. And you try to work on those sort of building blocks of training yeah. to, to get them to leave them alone. It's like when my sisters when they were little they used to have like a bit of a tantrum and you'd like and go, oh what's that over there? there? Oh. <laughs> and you distract them. <laughs> hey, this 
one here from Jess. Hey Jess, my cat's attitude has changed. She used to be all playful and happy, but now she doesn't really like people around her and she seems a little grumpy. What's made her do that? Uh, Got a grumpy cat. Yeah, there's a couple of things that can do that. Sometimes if they're getting picked on outside the house, mm -hmm. so they're getting picked on by the other neighbourhood cats, then you'll get like a, a sort of a trickle down. So they'll come into the house and they'll be a lot more grumpy to the people that they're around because they're feeling stressed when they're outside. Yeah. So that, that could be what's happening. Occasionally sometimes they'll, they'll change their behaviour like that as well if they're getting a bit sore, a little bit stiff any pain or anything so if she had some arthritis or something like that they can get a little bit grumpy. Ah, getting a little bit older. Yeah, so those are the things I'd look into to start with. It sounds like animals are quite similar to us. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean they, they have a lot of complexity in the way they act and what upsets them and how they behave and also I mean they, they get pretty much all the same conditions that you or I can get as well. Yeah. You know. Another one here, what's a good cure for bad breath for a dog? And how do I look after its teeth? That's from Dark Hunter. Well, it's pretty simple, like what we were just talking about before, you know, you can go back to human stuff. So yeah. brushing its teeth twice a, twice a week will make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And often you've got to sort of train them up half a minute to start with and then slowly do more and more as, you, as they yeah. get used to it. Um, you can give them chew, chew toys that are specially designed to help their teeth. There's special diets that are really fibrous that help clean the teeth. So okay. there's lots of things you can do. But you probably don't want to be brushing your teeth and then kind of lean down and do the dogs yeah, to separate. train in it. So. Separate. <laughs> or you both would be a bit... <sighs> Oh, now there's a whole bunch of great questions that have come through. You're going to be online trying yeah. to answer them. I'll be here for a while. You're here for a while? Yeah. Good. Vicky and Jordan, they're over oh, some great New Zealand music. Do you have a favourite New Zealand band or artist? Yeah, Golden Horse. Um, ah. Anything with an animal name in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, good no, answer. Probably, probably she had. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm going to say. Oh, what kind of animal is that? Yeah. She had. No, yeah, just we'll kidding. All right. <laughs> no, that's not really a pet question, Mix the letters though. up, see if you can I've got a pet question. I've got a yeah. pet question. Now, Go. of course, I've got my little puppy, Sumo, yeah. and uh, he was a bit tough to toilet train, to say uh -huh. the least. So and when you say puppy, how old is he now? Uh, just about to turn one year old. Okay. So we got him at eight weeks old, and uh, yeah, we used to wake up. Well, I didn't wake up because I was not tired anymore. I woke up because I could smell some stuff in my room. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What's the best way to toilet train your little puppy? Uh, did you start off with him being allowed to go inside? Did you use newspaper or something yeah, like that? Yeah, we had newspaper down okay. and um, I kept him in my room so I could yep. keep an eye on him. Yep. Um, but he sort of well, seemed to wander what's around. Quite a, what's quite a cool thing to do with that is you, once he's using the newspaper and you want him to start going outside so he, yeah. you know, he knows where he's supposed to go, is just to move that paper like a metre a day right. towards the back door. Oh, nice. Then suddenly it's just outside the back door with, you know, I don't know, maybe a little dog door yeah, for a dog yeah. like that. Sneaky. Cool. And then it's in the garden and then suddenly the paper's gone. Oh, now, I've yes. got a question for you for people who are thinking of getting a pet. Which one is the lowest maintenance? Goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This player is really safe. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Now, also with Sumo, of course, I want oh, to get... Oh, thank you, Sumo! Oh, Sumo, wow. mate, he's a show, but I want, to get, I want to get a bigger dog. Now, yeah. Sumo's a little fluffy dog. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. get, like, a, a rotwheeler, like, a one yeah. I can go running yeah. around the streets with. Yeah, to help you sort of... What's going to happen? Is he going to eat Sumo, like, think he's lunch? Like, does nah. it matter that Sumo's nah. older? I think if you if you got the big dog as an adult, there could be a problem. Mm -hmm. But as long as you get him as a little puppy, yeah. Sumo's actually going to be the boss. Oh, cool. Okay, cool. so he's going to grow up as the boss, and as long as you get a lot of training in with the Roddy mm -hmm. so that he you know he knows his boundaries and knows yeah. what he's supposed to do you'll probably keep that relationship right through so uh, right, writing it down a I'm nice all sorted. happy family yeah. I'm all now, sorted. a lot of you guys on the hub have been asking about uh, your pets and cats and dogs mainly that are a little bit overweight now they want to know what's a safe way to have put them on a bit of a diet and trim them down what can you suggest uh, I guess just not feeding them junk you know the same kind of advice you give to give to yourselves give to people yeah. keep them active Lots of walking for dogs, so, you know, with Sumo, we're going to go back to Sumo. Yeah. Um, he, he's got to, um, you know, you've got to have him out every day. You've got to have him walking every day, ideally an hour or so. Um, keep him fit. Um, you can actually get, you can actually get low calorie food as well if they're getting a little bit chubby. Yeah. So it's got less, you know, less fat in it. And drop a bit of weight that okay. way. Okay, awesome. all good stuff. So, now we've got to announce some winners, of course, you sent in your photos, and we've got Hubsers as well. First of all, I'm going to announce the Hubsers who are winning. We've got Quinna Rocks, Dark underscore Hunter, SJ Shane, and Kate 23 IOU. Congratulations. And for those who have sent in photos today, congratulations to Josh and his mouse Bob, Jared from Stamble Bay with his budgie Tinkerbell, Candace Scarlett and her turtle Roxy, Rye and her Pomeranian Cookie, Superdog Benny with Pirate Holly and Superboy Reuben, and lastly, Tyler McLeod with Buddy. You guys are all going to see Jenny. Congratulations. Yay, well done to you guys. But also, thank you to you for coming and Thanks hanging out. We've had so many questions. Do you think you might come back again? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, that would right. be good. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed the pet special, and we will catch you next time for more Studio 2. We'll catch you later, guys. Bye. Bye.